Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the alarm input on your Dower NVR. This is the 4216. You'll find that a lot of these connections are different on the NVRs, but in this video, I'm going to show you the principle of operation so you'll be able to set this up on any of the Dower NVRs. Now, over here, I've got the alarm input, and in this case, I just happen to have an alarm output also connected. Now, I have a panic button. Over here, I'm showing it says emergency, and when I depress this button, it initiates an alarm condition. You should have heard that did, 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 and also look at that light coming on. So in this video, I'm gonna firstly show you how to set up the input to your NVR, and then I'll show you how to do the software settings. And then at the end of the video, I'll just quickly show you how to do the alarm output, although that is not the main reason for this video. Now for the alarm input connection, you might want to use a passive infrared sensor, such as one of these, maybe an indoor sensor. Yeah, I've just got two different ones, maybe even just a door contact, a beam, or even just a panic button as I've shown. Now here is a multimeter, and I've set it to continuity. Continuity measures if there's a short circuit. Notice that when I measure across the shaft, the meter says zero and it makes that sound. If I show you the resistance, it is now less than two ohms signifying a dead short. Now before connecting your alarm devices to your NVR, we first gotta determine if they are a normally open or a normally closed connection. I'll briefly demonstrate the difference. Over here I have a switch. I've connected my multimeter leads to the back of the switch. Notice that only when I depress the switch is it a short circuit. Open circuit, short circuit. So only when the user intervenes is there a short circuit or a closure. This is a normally open switch. Now over here I've got a different switch. Notice that it is already showing a short circuit. So this is a normally closed switch. Only when the user intervenes does it open the circuit. Open circuit, closed. Open, closed. So in the natural resting state it's a closed circuit. Now if I take a panic button for example, generally panic buttons are normally open. Notice how it's an open circuit and only when I depress the switch does it become a closed circuit. So if I connect this to my NVR, I have to tell my NVR that the connection is normally open. The alarm only occurs when I press the contacts in order to close the contacts, but under normal conditions it's an open circuit. Now here I have a door switch. It relies on this magnet which comes close to the read relay and when it comes close to the read relay it closes the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my meter to the other side of the door switch. Notice that it's automatically a short circuit and now if I want to open the door for example notice it becomes an open circuit. Most alarm systems work like this. They are closed and only when there's an alarm they become open circuit. If you're going to be using an indoor passive or a beam to activate your alarm, but in most cases we use the normally closed and only when there's alarm, meaning I have movement in front of the sensor, does it become an open circuit. Right, for this example I'm going to use these two inputs. I've got a panic button which is normally open and that's going to be connected to alarm input 1. Then I've got a door switch which is normally closed and that's going to be connected to alarm input 2. Now at the back of your NVR you'll see the alarm input and output connector. In this case I've got two connectors. The writing on the top correlates to the top connector. This row of writing correlates to the bottom connector. This is just a duplicate of what's on the top. Notice that the top says N01 and C1. N01 and C1 is actually the relay output. So this is for your alarm output. What we are interested in is the alarm input. Over here I have the ground then 1. So if I want to connect my first input, I can use that and that. This would be alarm input one. Can you see how it lines up with number one? Notice that this connector is for this writing over here. Some NVRs are different. Now for alarm input two, I have number two there, which, which correlates to this connector over here, and then the ground, which is over there. All the grounds are common. It doesn't matter if you use that ground or that ground, or at the bottom, that ground, they are all connected to each other. The independent connections are one, two, three, four. So that means on this NVR, I have four inputs available for this NVR. I'll now show you the software setup. Right, so I need to get into the main menu and log into the NVR. And I go to the alarm section, and on the left here, which may be different on different NVRs, I have the options for the alarm. In this case, what I want to do is go to alarm input. Now when you come to the alarm input, you will notice that you've got a drop down menu for all the alarm inputs available on your NVR. So that means that on this NVR, I've got four options. I'm going to be using alarm input 1 and alarm input 2. So for the first setup, I'm just going to use alarm input 1. Now I need to enable it, so I toggle that button. I can give this a name. This could be called panic button. Now it's asking me the type. 
Now the panic button uses a normally open connection, which means that under normal circumstances, the contacts are open. Now it's asking me the period. Now why this is red is things to do with alarm are red on the Dower NVR. Now in this case, it was a panic button. So you would have the period for all times because a panic button implies that whenever there's an emergency, you press the panic button. But if it wasn't a panic button and it was just a motion sensor, and maybe you're using a motion sensor as an alarm indoors of your office, then you would set the period differently because if people are working in your office, you wouldn't want it to alarm during say business hours. So you might disable the alarm function during these hours. So that means that when you leave your office on Friday afternoon, PRR will be armed all the way to Monday morning, but then it will arm again in the night. So that means that if there's any motion on that PRR, it will send the signal to your NVR to do some other action. And I'll explain what I mean by that shortly. I'm just going to put this all back. And now I'm going to show you what I mean by some other action. For example, over here it says alarm output. So you can use your NVR as a relay station. That means that if, say for example, I use the panic, if someone presses the panic button, what do you want the NVR to do? So in this case, you can, you can set a relay output, which they are calling a general alarm. Now on the NVR that I have on display, it only has two relays. So I have two relay outputs. So over here it says N01 and C1. And then it says NO2 and C2. So these two over here are the outputs of the first relay and these two over here are the outputs of the second relay. Large NVRs have even more relay outputs. Now I've opened the cover and I'm showing you inside. There are the two relays which correlate to those two relay outputs. These are independent. So you can use one relay for one function and another relay for another function. For example, you can set this for a siren and you can connect this for a light. At the end of the video, I'll quickly show you how to connect your output devices. So going back to the software, when it says here alarm out, this is where you connect your outputs. But keep in mind that this will only work if you have selected the alarm output to be in the auto position. So here I've selected alarm output on the side. And if I set this to off, I'm now overriding any of those relay outputs and I'm switching them off. But I want them to operate when the alarm input takes place. So I now must make sure they're on auto. Now I come back to the alarm input. So in this case, I've set alarm out one to be on. So that means just relay one will close. In its resting position, it is an open circuit. When there's an alarm input, it then sends a signal to the NVR and the NVR will then close relay one's output. I will still demonstrate that later. Now it's asking you, do you want to show a message? For example, if I go to the live view and I initiate an alarm by pressing the panic button, notice that this message has come up. It says alarm output one. Uh, there is another alarm here because it's telling me my network is disconnected because I've set it to tell me if I've unplugged the network cable. So if you want to see that message, then you can select this. You can also send an email if there's an alarm input. Now it's asking you if you want to record anything when that alarm input takes place. Now over here, I only have two cameras. So if I select all, I'm going to select camera one and three. So that means that when there's an alarm input, I'm going to tell my NVR to record cameras one and three. Whether or not there's motion there, it, it'll just record. And then over here, it's asking me how long to keep the recording going for. And in this case, it was 10 seconds. You can also set a picture storage. You can even do a PTZ activation or a tour. And then you've got the buzzer option. Notice that when I initiate the alarm, it makes that dit, 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 dit sound. So that means if you're close to the NVR, you'll, you'll even hear the NVR's buzzer. Now on the right hand side, there's some additional settings. Now the first one is anti-dither. Now say for example, somebody presses the panic and then they press the panic again immediately afterwards and then they press it again immediately afterwards. So maybe they press it three times in three seconds. What anti-dither does is it only registers one alarm input in the time that you set here. So if I set this to five seconds, even though I press the panic button again after one second, it'll only register it the first time. It's almost like a lockout. So if you set this very low, for example, at only one second, if you press the panic button every two or three seconds, it will keep registering that alarm. Now what the latch does is it's how long you want the relay to remain closed. So in this case, if I set it to five seconds, I could add the five and the one together. My preliminary test show me that if I set that to 10 seconds and this to 10 seconds, it actually stays closed for 20 seconds. So when calculating the relay close time, just take into consideration the anti-dither time and add it to the latch time. But I'm just going to make these lower so it's easier to demonstrate. 
So I've got the antidither to two and the latch to three, which means the relay should be closed for about five seconds. Now don't forget to apply your settings when you're done. Now I'm using the local as the alarm input. You have additional settings here if you wish to use IPC or IPC offline. So that means if the camera goes offline, you can also initiate an alarm. Now the last thing to set up is the storage. Now because we've told the NVR to record a channel, we need to also confirm that on the schedule side. So I'm going to exit this here, make sure you apply your settings. Now I go to storage and I go to schedule. Now have a look at D1. Now if I wanted to allow that alarm to be recorded, I have to set it here. I can now scroll here and include all the times and all the days to allow me to have an alarm record. So I've now applied that. Now you'll also have to do that on your other channel. For example, D2, if you look at that, it's not on, but D3, I've already done it. So both D1 and D3 will now record when an alarm input is initiated. I'm now pressing the panic button. You can hear the NVR has registered the alarm. So when I come back to my NVR, I can now go to the playback and I've already been playing with this a bit this morning. So you can see there are some additional alarm recordings. Right, so over here we can see that both camera 1 and 3 have recorded when there was alarm input. Now having a look at the playback, we can see that these two cameras are actually showing no movement. Which means that the cameras are set to record whether or not there's any motion in front of them. So that means that in this case when somebody pressed the panic button, I have camera 1 and 3 recording. Now earlier I had even set it where only one camera was recording when there was a panic press. Now if I press stop, and I uncheck the alarm option and I go to motion, you can see that the motion recording is still there, but the alarm recording is something separate. This is the recording for the alarm, in this case, is initiated by the pressing of that panic button. Now, what about alarm input two? Now, alarm input two is that door switch. So I'm gonna switch alarm input two, and I'm gonna call this door. And now I'm gonna change this from normally open to normally closed. I'm just going to apply it. Now in this case, the NVR buzzer will go off when I open the door. Remember, this is the door sensor. So if I open the door, notice how an alarm input is registered on the NVR. I never set any other rules, only the buzzer. In your case, you can set it to record the cameras or set an alarm output as you require. Now notice I still have this away from the read relay on the side. So what's gonna happen is the NVR is gonna keep registering an alarm every time the anti-dither and the latch times out because there's still an alarm condition over here. Remember that the door is still open. So you've got to be quite careful with how you set this, otherwise you'll keep having alarm footage recorded and alarm condition present on your NVR if you don't set this correctly. So coming back to the settings over here, because this says normally closed, when I pulled the magnet away, it open circuited the door switch. It remained open circuited. So what happens is it counts down the anti-dither and it keeps operating an alarm. So when choosing whether you want the normally open or the normally closed, consider carefully the type of alarm equipment you are going to use. Otherwise you'll keep having alarm conditions on your NVR. Now in this case, I'm going to set the alarm output also to relay one. So I'm just going to switch that on. What that means is when I separate the door sensor or open the door, we're also going to get an alarm output. And I'm now going to demonstrate how to wire the alarm output. Maybe you want a floodlight or a siren for the alarm output. In this case, I'm going to do the siren. Right, I'm going to connect a DC 12 volt siren to the normally open connections of the NVR. Now over here, I'm just going to use a 12 volt battery for this example. On some NVRs, there's even a 12 volt connection on the NVR. So your NVR might even have a 12 volt DC supply already present. Now in this case, I'm just showing you the principle of operation of how to do this. So I'm going to have a 12 volt battery. Over here, I've just got a 12 volt lead acid battery and there's the positive and there's the negative. The way I set this out is the positive of the lead acid battery is going into the input here, which is the normally open one terminal. The output comes out from the common of the relay. It doesn't matter if you have these the other way around. This is just a relay, so it's like a switch. But the point is, I'm opening the positive side. So here we go, the positive goes in there, and the output of the relay is going to the positive of my siren. The output of my siren, the negative, is going back to the supply. Right, I've now connected that. There's the positive of my battery going to the input. The positive of my siren is over here, and the negative of my siren goes back to the supply. Now in practice, you'd rather use an external DC power supply, something like this, 
but I'm just going to do this demonstration so you can see how this works. Now I've just put my siren into a bean bag here to absorb some of the sound because it's going to be very loud. Now the first alarm condition is the panic button. Now this is a normally open condition and when I depress the panic button, the siren goes on for that predetermined time which we set the latch and the dither. Now I've got another alarm input. This is a door contact switch. In this case, this is a normally closed setup and when I open the door, the siren should also go off. A few things to note. The first one is even though I closed this, the siren remains on for the time that was preset in the latch and the dither. Now another thing to note is there is a limit of only one amp through the relay that is on board. So if you wanted to use a very large siren that maybe used five or six amps, you would be overloading that relay and it, and it probably would not be able to open that higher current. If you're going to be using higher output devices, rather use an additional relay to increase the braking and closing capacity of the additional relay. Another point is both of these were operating that one relay. If you wanted to, you could use this emergency panic button for relay one and maybe the door sensor for relay two, which means you could have had a different alarm output. Maybe you wanted that flood line as the alarm output. If you'd like to see more details about how to work with the alarm output, please check out my video in my Dawa playlist. Right, that brings me to the end of this video. I hope that it was helpful and thanks for watching and cheers.